Hi, my name is Natalie, and this is Natalie Lawyer Chick. I'll be discussing popular topics through a legal lens. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Hey, YouTube, it's Natalie. Good evening. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Uh, so this is going to be a hopefully quick reaction video to raw video, Judge Blast, Adam County Human Services. Um, this video was suggested to me by just a couple of people, not sure how many people are really interested in this, but I did get a couple of people recommending this. So let's get right into it. Uh, this child was literally fell to death. The Adams County Social Services Department in this case can own, uh, 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 can, uh, ordinarily, I mean, they just paid a $6.7 million judgment mm. because of their uh, malfeasance. It wasn't negligence. It was because of their malfeasance mm -hmm. in, uh, in a case involving adoptive children. Mm -hmm. uh, this case isn't simply negligence. Uh, this case uh, isn't uh, simply a situation where somebody slipped up. Uh, this is a case where the ongoing workers, their supervisors, and the Adams County Social Services Department was directly, causally responsible for the death of this child. And quite candidly, they're worried about their civil liability. Uh, frankly, I think somebody should be taking them in front of a grand jury and trying to find out whether or not their conduct was reckless enough to merit a criminal prosecution. Okay, so first of all, judges... By and large, you know, no one's monolithic, but no group of people, but judges by and large try or strive to be dispassionate. This judge is clearly very incensed and angry by what whatever these um, human services people have done that he believes resulted in the death of these children. And he thinks that not only should they have civil liabilities, they should have criminal liabilities. But in by and for the most part, in most uh, places, social services workers, uh, Department of Social Services, or you know whatever, they usually have qualified immunity for uh, their behavior in the office. So as long as they're doing something in the performance of their duties, um, which means you know they're following protocol basically, and if something goes wrong, they're immune from prosecution and from civil liability. So he's saying that what they did was not just misconduct or negligence, but gross uh, malfeasance. So that's a very, very high bar allegation to make. So something very serious clearly happened here, and we're talking about the death of a child. So if that just helps to put this in any context, this is very out of the ordinary for a judge to make these types of comments. It was that serious. I had to review the social services files as part of uh, the pretrial proceedings. Mm -hmm. uh, the overwhelming majority of the information in those files was irrelevant to these proceedings. However, I had the opportunity to review the course of supervision of this family. Mm -hmm. These children were virtually out of uh, the home in the custody of the social services department from the time of their birth both children the court knows that the child before i even get into anything too far we have a deceased child or children here if these children were mostly in the custody of social services and then passed away while in the custody of social services or human services that is absolutely horrible because you don't take away children for them well you shouldn't anyway for them to end up passing away you take away children because the circumstances that they are in are so much more dangerous and the state has a duty and an obligation to take care of those children and act in loco parentis in the place of a parent. Um, and so they definitely abrogated their duties if those children ended up deceased. Older brother um, was, uh, was uh, three years old and still nonverbal completely incapable of speaking. I'm so angry about the level of supervision in this case. It's incomprehensible to the court. 
Mm. How things could have evolved in this case. Knowing the history, I reviewed 18 inches of social services records. Mm. There was a history of neglect and chaos and lack of structure involving these children that had gone on from their birth. Mm. Their mother had never provided any structure. Neither child's father had ever been involved in their life. There were red flags all over this, these files for a period of three years. Mm. Three years. And I've seen bad cases. And I've seen bad supervision. Mm. Um, I had to intervene as a judge to prevent it because social workers were disingenuous in court. Oftentimes based upon the direction of their supervisors. This case is appalling. Independent of the level of or lack of supervision, lack of insight, lack of oversight, lack of comprehension, lack of competency that led to the return of the children to their mother, the court notes is... Oh, they... Okay, so these kids are mostly in the custody of DSS or Adams County Human Services. The child is nonverbal at three, which could be due for a myriad of reasons. That could be because of autism or something. But they return the child to the mother, and he's saying that they should have never done that. And it looks like the child ended up deceased. Oh, this is horrible, horrible, horrible. Wow. Aggravated by the fact that three days before Michael Harris was killed, his older brother had a clearly suspicious and non-accidental injury behind the right ear on the back of his head. Mm. This was not documented in notes, although it was documented in the work worker's notes. It was photographed and documented. And yet Michael Harris never underwent any type of a physical examination. Oh no, so social workers are aware of the issue. They're aware of potential abuse and injuries to the child. They document it, they photograph it, and then they do nothing. And then shortly thereafter, the other child passes away. Oh, this is bad. This is really, really bad. Um, you know, attorneys that practice family law uh, know very, very well how difficult it is to overcome recommendations to take children away when it comes to DSS. But also, it's really difficult sometimes to work with that department because sometimes there is that level of overwhelm where they're just not paying attention or properly supervising children that are in their custody or under their supervision. So this is a widespread issue. I have seen it, other attorneys have seen it, judges have seen it, and it's all across the country. This is real, and that's not to malign social workers because social workers do really, really difficult work for very, very little pay. It's just an overall systemic issue. What's appalling about this is that the Adams County Social Services Department mm -hmm. has repeatedly mm -hmm. ballyhooed through their uh, uh, public relations department their relationship with the camp center and with the uh, Children's Hospital and the Anschutz Medical Facility and their ability to uh, have children examined to have children inspected to make sure that child abuse is prevented and children are appropriately cared for. They have an ongoing relationship with a medical facility. This is nothing that would have required any significant amount of insight or probably more than about two seconds of thought. <clears throat> with that So he's saying they had the ability, they had the ability to intervene because of the relationships they have with these different institutions and they fail to do so. Relationship in mind with a family that has an extensive abusive and neglectful history with a mother who had violated court orders and the court notes she was ordered not to have her parents have contact with these children because of their history first of drug abuse 
-hmm. Secondly, because of their history with the Department of Social Services, that that they were a clear and present danger to the children. Mm -hmm. She had the maternal grandparents care for these children in violation of an express order of court, and there was nothing in the file that indicated that at any point an unannounced visit to the purported provider for daycare had ever been made, even though that was a family member. So they never did any unannounced visits, would just be like pop-ups to make sure that the child is where you say the child is going to be. It sounds like there's generational issues in this family and the um, mother was clearly not following the court's orders to keep the children away from the grandparents and DSS, um, I'm calling DSS because here they're Department of Social Services, but Adams County Human Services failed to intervene um, and do proper supervision. What are they there for, there for then if they're not making sure that at least the court's orders are being followed? And as a consequence, there was absolutely no supervision. Oh. There was absolutely uh, no uh, checking. President Reagan once said, uh, we should trust but verify. verify. Uh, yeah. And that's uh, always been something that's become almost trite in terms of uh, our societal uh, discourse. Mm -hmm. There are certain cases you don't trust and verify. Mm. That's this case. Mm. The court notes that because of the lack of verification, they never, the, and they being the Adams County Social Services Department, never checked on what was going on with somebody they knew was deceitful, they knew had been previously neglectful, they knew had placed the children at risk, they did nothing to further uh, uh, examine what was going on. Moreover, after this is why I don't work with children. I only work with adults. And by adults, you know, my clients range from 18, 19, 20 to the elderly because this is so heartbreaking. Um, and if one of the cogs breaks down, that can be life or death for a small child, you know? It, you know, losing your freedom is very important, but losing the life of a child is so much more daunting. And the judge's uh, indignation is righteous in this situation. He's completely right to be as angry as he is. After the children were, were returned, when all of the information is in the first 60 days of reunification is the most stressful period of time for a family. Mm. It's stressful for the parent. Mm. There are demands regarding employment, regarding treatment, mm. transportation, housing. Mm. All of those issues were present in this case. Mm. Every single one of them. They needed heightened supervision because they were coming up on being recently reunited with one another. So there, there was studies showing that there's heightened need to supervise them more stridently to make sure that they're handling the transition well. And it looks like human services just completely, um, just completely let go of their duty, just com completely abrogated it. Ms. Key, the child's mother, was marginal in terms of her employability. Okay. She had extraordinary uh, difficulties financially, which is one of the reasons that she was uh, cohabiting with Mr. Scarlett intermittently. And the court notes that he wasn't investigated at all. Uh, the... Uh, so they didn't even investigate the man that she was cohabitating with, living with periodically, and the children were there, and they didn't do an investigation on him. I, this is, this is terrible, terrible. The court notes that despite those factors, all of which are clear red flags regarding the potential for future abuse, they were disregarded, the children were returned to her, and when clear evidence of abuse was shown on a nonverbal three-year-old child who couldn't even say what an ordinary three-year-old child would say. They did nothing to examine his sibling. Nothing. And the evidence at trial disclosed there were numerous injuries on Michael Harris on his head, his torso, other parts of his body that were older than that three-day window. 
The iron testing established that. Had they taken this child to a qualified medical provider, utilizing their authority under the emergency protective provisions of Colorado law, so this is not just Colorado. Every state has um, social services that have emergency powers to remove a child from their family in order for them to receive medical treatment where the family is not rendering medical treatment for a child in need. And these children were already under human services supervision. So it wasn't just like a first time intervention. They had a duty to monitor consistently this issue and failed to do so. This is, again, anyone familiar with social services or court or the law knows that this is just extremely, extremely inappropriate, an extreme abrogation of duty. To their partner, who they want to use for public relations purposes, but mm. obviously not for medical treatment. Mm. This is a point he keeps making. They like to tout how they have a great relationship with these hospitals and organizations and therapists and things, but they're not using, they use them for public relations and for press conferences, but they're not using them for, um, they're not using them for actually treating the children mm, and for doing what they're supposed to be doing. Horrible. This case would have never happened. Wow. Never happened because the injuries to Michael Harris would have been palpable. The non-lethal, non-life-threatening injuries would have been palpable. Mm -hmm. And whether Mr. Scarlett was responsible for those injuries or Ms. Key was responsible for those injuries, <clears throat> this would have been a county court child abuse case. Mm. Not a first-degree murder prosecution. What an excellent point that had social services intervened, this, they would have been, pro the parents would have, the, the boyfriend and the mom would have been assaulted for, would have been prosecuted for assault instead of being prosecuted for murder. They would have been prosecuted for child abuse instead of being prosecuted for murder. They had the opportunity and the duty to save life, and they didn't do that here. Um, I think that that would expose them to both civil and criminal liability. I definitely do, based on what this judge is saying. Mm. It's appalling the level of neglect, not by the mother, which is appalling, mm. but by the state charged with the care and protection of the child. Oh. It's ridiculous. It transcends the boundaries of human decency. Mm. Irrespective of the bureau bureaucratic ability to hide behind privacy laws, to hide behind privilege, to make no statements, to try and cover their tracks knowing the press is going to go away, the stories don't have legs for five years. Judges get rotated out of divisions, and so you can come in with a new judge and give them the smiley face mm -hmm. and convince them that you're... That, that bureaucracy, that's how corruption proliferates. That's how it spreads. You know, you think people will forget, you lay low, you stick to policy, and then you just get to keep your job and there will be no consequences. That's how systemic corruption takes place. He's absolutely right. Doing your job, mm. uh, that uh, administrative reviews take years and years and years, and children die, but bureaucrats still have their jobs. Mm. That's the way it works. That's the way the system in this state is set up. Mm. Michael Harris never had a chance in life. Mm. As a system, we had an obligation to give him a chance in life, and our system failed. Mm. It is appalling. Wow. Wow. Um, you know, as far as a legal analysis is concerned, there is definitely a concern about departments of social services, human resource, human services, um, providing improper supervision. As some of you may know, if you've looked at some of my older videos, I was in the foster care system. I was in the foster care system off and on 
from the age of six until uh, until the from the age of six until the age of twelve, off and on. So that's a pretty significant portion of my childhood, and I ran into great social workers. But the majority of the social workers that I dealt with on a personal level were inattentive, horrible. Took the word of the foster parent over the word word of the child. Um, so. And then also, you know, I've had interactions, you know, with them when things have gone too far and a child, you know, has been seriously injured or died in my professional capacity. This is a systemic issue all across the country of an overwhelm of the caseload leading to inattentiveness, leading to abuse, uh, leading to death. So this judge's anger is completely right. I mean, this is from 2013. Let me read you guys some of the blurbs. So this happened in Denver, Colorado. Adams County District Court Judge Chris Milanakis blasts the County Human Services Department for failing to protect 22-month-old Ryan Harris, Michael Ryan Harris, who was beaten to death by his mother and boyfriend and his mother's boyfriend in 2011. Social workers have removed the toddler from his mother's care after documenting her neglect and drug use only to return him to her custody before he was killed. I mean, there is family reunification is very, very important, but you can't do that without making sure that the family is a healthy environment and a safe environment for the child. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and I will talk to you later. Bye.